Our heroic age has arrived, and Gorgo is right behind us in a golden age of her own. It's time to see just how much we can foil her plans while simultaneously building an army capable of taking her cities. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Civilization VI in our In Denial series. So, really interesting times in the last episode. We're going to try and keep this settler from doing anything, basically. We're just going to try and block it in with these two units and hope that having these units kind of indisposed blocking the settler doesn't cause too many problems. But I can choose a new research project, and I'm going to do so now. Um... I am going to go ahead and select engineering so we have access to the catapult. That could come in very handy if that war with Gorgo comes sooner than later. One thing I didn't do in the last episode that I kind of wish I had done is treat with a monitor as quickly as I could. Because now, since I didn't, which seems to be the case in a lot of Civilization VI leaders, or with a lot of Civilization VI leaders, she is uh, not friendly towards me. She's unfriendly. So I'm guessing I can't. Yeah. She's not interested in a delegation from me right now. Which makes me sad. But let's... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and train another settler in Raw Cadet. And I'm also going to train... I'm going to purchase a builder in Raw Cadet so that we can do some additional improvement of the city. Let's see what else we can get away with. Akatatan can have a builder done in six turns. You can also have a water mill done in six turns. You could also have a barracks done in seven turns. That is extra production, extra housing, and a great general point. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's happening. Okay. So I'm going to take... Hmm. Yeah. This is going to remove Gorgo as the suzerain of Ungazar Gamu. I am going to go ahead and move this scout over here. We might be able to take that goody hut pretty soon. I'm going to keep that unit right there, that unit right there. Okay, now of course... Yeah. Let's go ahead and build fishing huts there. I think taking advantage of the food resources out in the water will help Swinette establish itself as a meaningful city. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that. We have a meteor site right there, so I need to investigate that with my scout. That could be a free unit. All right, so it looks like Sparta has finished building the Great Library. Oh, the World Congress has been founded. Nice. 100% production towards buildings in this district. Um, hmm. Let's just go ahead and say city center. And then producing or purchasing military units using the chosen currency type is 100% of the cost until the next World Congress. Uh, Congress, excuse me. So, you know what? Let's just make them more expensive to produce. And I'm not really going to sink any points into either of these. I don't... I don't know. Maybe maybe this is worth sinking some points into. Let me, let me go for this. If we lose the vote, then we get the points back. But this will allow basically all of the city center buildings, like monuments and granaries and... Um, why am I drawing a blank? Nice. So that one went through. That one didn't. Water mills. I was going to say water wheels. All of those, it will allow them to build twice as fast, effectively. All right, so notice that Shadet is starting to grow a little bit faster. Not much faster than last turn, though. All right, so interestingly, it looks like that horseman unit is here to cause trouble. And yeah, this is very annoying. Nubia's missionary has converted both Ephesus and Eritrea. So I'm just going to move over here to Eritrea and reconvert that to my religion, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. And I'll bring this missionary down to help with that cause. 
I'm going to put you in the water so that you can start looking around. Now we have you available here. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring you here. Build a farm. Immediately you can see the bonus to Rockadet. Now all I need... Yeah, you... So Nubia is almost certainly going for a religious victory. This is very aggressive missionary placement at the moment. And I'm kind of annoyed <laughs> that it's with the religion that I wanted. I mean, I suppose after being gone this long and after making a series that's literally a meme about the leader that I never wanted to play as, I suppose that I should just accept that I deserve it. I guess. But it's still difficult for me to accept. All right, so let's bring you down around that way. We have one diplomatic victory point because of the vote that we won. Gorgo has, of course, finished the Great Library, which I already noted. So when we take Eritrea, which we will, that wonder will be ours, as will that campus, which she has built there. We haven't even built a shrine yet in Akhetaten, and that will really help with our fake production. Is another man's engineering. So now we can build Machu Picchu. We can build aqueducts. Not that we need to at the moment. All of our cities are by rivers or... Well, no, there's not a place we could build one in Shadet. We literally put that city there to go for the pyramids, and then the pyramids got taken from us. I'm not bitter. It's fine. So <laughs> let's go for currency now. And now we can actually become suzerain of Ungazar Gamu. We don't get any points for it, but that's okay. Just using these units to scout that area. Okay, now I can get a mine going here. Excellent, which will help with production in Rocketet. I still have these cities on growth focus. You could maybe make an argument that it's time to switch to, like, a production focus instead. Doesn't really help too much at the moment, but Akhetaten might benefit from a growth focus. Or a production focus, I should say. Nice. So Eritrea once again belongs to our religion. Its influence is falling. So what that... Yeah. Yeah, this is why. It looks like all of Sparta follows Pesajet. Which is freaking funny. Can we just acknowledge? All right, we're just going to try and head these guys off as best we can by blocking them here with these units. <laughs> and I'm very amused about it. All right, let's put you here. Now Swinette will be done in eight turns. And let's go to the next. Four turns until the city's fully loyal. We should see it start to grow faster. Oh, damn. I think that actually hurt... Yeah, population lost. That actually hurt Shadet's population, I think. Or maybe... Oh, no. It didn't. So it must have hurt Eritrea's population. Well, was Eritrea's population at five before? Ooh. <laughs> okay. Let's get this builder back up there. Oh, wow, that was fast. I wasn't expecting him to move all the way up there in one turn. So I could go for the additional culture and faith point if I build a Sphinx. Or we could build another farm and have the additional housing. How much does Rockadet need the housing right now? Doesn't really need the housing. Let's go for the Sphinx. On the coast, which just somehow feels right to me. We may actually get to this tile before they do at this point. I'm like, I'm thoroughly amused because they haven't moved that settler in a turn. All right, so now we have this settler here. And we could potentially settle in some areas. Well, first of all, let me arrange to get up here and grab that goody hut. But we could settle in some areas that have some good resources available to us. Um, we have some olives and some tobacco up here. I know I still have some olives that I haven't improved yet. I'm, believe me, I know. It hurts me too. It hurts me, too. Um, 
All right, I'm going to put the settler... I'm going to send them here first. Because I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about that volcano starting to erupt. And or Nungazar Gamu becoming hostile. <laughs> while that settler is on their way. So I have the ability to buy another builder. I'm going to hold off, though. Let me go ahead and train... Yeah, let's get another, let's get a temple going. We need to get our faith production up because that is the resource that is fueling this heroic age for us. All right, we're just going to keep both those units there. Oh my God, they backed off with the settler. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to freaking do it. Heck yeah. All right, so we have thwarted Gorgo's plans. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. All right, so... That is very true. Epit Epictetus. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, slash Sean Bean. So we have the ability now to build the commercial hub and within it a market, History which will help. the version of past events that people have decided <clears throat> to agree upon. Thank you, Napoleon. I could really use an improved government at this point. All right, so... 30% production towards encampment districts, harbor district. Yep, let's do that because we're building a harbor and we're working on encampment districts. So let's work on that particular policy. I still want to have the bonus towards settlers, I think. Although, actually, no, let's go for the production bonus towards ancient and classical wonders because building Jebel Barkal might be the only way that I am able to get any iron because I don't have any iron in my territory if you haven't noticed that by the way kind of annoying all right four turns and we'll have that city settled and then they won't really be able to do anything in this area so get wrecked Gorgo all right we have an additional governor policy to use here let's see let's go ahead and have plus one science per turn for each citizen in the city. That won't show until next turn, unfortunately. <laughs> Civilization VI's displays of its yields each turn are finicky like that. Some will update immediately, some will take a turn. Why it's not all immediate or all until the next turn, I don't know. There might be an explanation. If there is, I don't have it. But that's just the way it is. All right, feudalism. Farm improvements now gain plus one food from every two adjacent farm improvements. Ah, remember that? Mentioned that a few episodes ago when you have basically a triad of farms in a triangle shape. We have two adjacent farms and they basically become synergistically infused. I can say that. All right, so we're about to get that goody hut and then we can grab that meteor site, which will give us a free military unit. I'm going to send this missionary back over to Ephesus and see if we can take control of that. It seems like her missionaries are running around trying to undo the damage that I'm doing, which is freaking funny. Let's just acknowledge. Yeah, we need to keep an eye on whatever she might be trying to do here. I don't want to get too close to her borders because I don't want to make her mad. I want to bide my time until the exact right moment. We do have a stronger army than her right now, but she is absolutely slaying in science. It's absurd. And I'm doing literally everything I can. Well, I suppose that's not true. There are a few more things I can do. So, let's see. Like, I could train a builder right now. I can go ahead and buy a builder in Akhetaten. And next turn, I might be able to buy one in Swinette. Okay, let's see what this gets us. One new pop. Nice. I think that was in Rockadet, and we got 5 XP for that scout. That's nice. Uh, oh, nice. You can actually get... You can disembark there. So, all right. I'm going to do this one turn at a time, though, because I want to keep an eye on this area and not lose sight of this scout in case any barbarian units get close. Oh, I didn't realize I sent them through the water. Get out of the water. Damn. <laughs> oh, hello. I have a naval combat bonus now. I remember you. Do you remember me? I remember you. 
you ran off that one time, and your buddy came in and fought me and surprised me, and I had to run, but now I'm stronger. Alright. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like my missionary is going to be able to do very much in Ephesus. Yeah, I completely thwarted her plans with that settler. It makes me so happy. Mega Colossal Eruption. So it's saying again that another population was lost. I don't know if that's mine or someone else's. Seven fertilized tiles, mainly in Gorgo's territory, I, I guess. Again, beginning my studies, I would follow the advice of Plato and start with mathematics. So we can now build Petra in Swinette <laughs> and nowhere else. Uh, we can build a consulate in the diplomatic quarter. And we have plus one movement for all, na all naval units. So I think that actually was in Shed at that time. Although, at the same time, I don't think it was. I think it must have been in another city nearby, closer to the volcano, not in Eritrea or Shadet. So, I mean, I'll take it. That's fantastic. Okay, a monitor still doesn't like me. I mean, why? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done anything to her. All right, I'm going to back off with these two units so that Gorgo doesn't get the wrong idea. And I want to go ahead and improve that Luxury Resource next turn. That will help with literally everything. So far, we're not really able, since we don't have another trader, I will be able to move my trader from Swinette soon. We aren't able to grow Shadet any faster than we're currently growing it, which is a shame. But let's go ahead and get that water mill built. Remember, we passed that policy in the World Congress that is enabling us to do that a little faster. Let's use this last missionary charge. Oh, yay! Ephesus is now following our religion. Didn't see that coming. You didn't see that coming either, did you? Bye-bye. Well, you guys saw it coming. I, I was just talking to the Quadrarium. The Quadrarium is now dead. Oh, no. I, I don't care about any of that. Thank you. Thank you for that, Bandar Brunei. That is one thing about Civ 6. Some of you who've been following my channel for a long time who remember old Civilization VI playthroughs, there is something, and, and I imagine if I were to dig through the code long enough and figure out where to find it, I could probably locate it. There is something about, it always happens when I'm not expecting it, and I always comment on it, and it's probably so hard for me to, so hard for you to know what I'm talking about. But there is something about the mouse release code, and it seems, because I think that was a right click that I just did just now, but it's for left click or right click, mainly for left click that I've noticed, where like if you're dragging, like if, if you're just doing this, like so, sometimes if you release with the mouse on the right point, it will treat it as a click. Like for example, I think what can happen is if I were to drag down like right now in such a way that when I let go, my mouse cursor was over Bandar Brunei. So I'm clicking on the map, right? Sorry, this is a huge tangent. I'm so sorry. But those of you who have experienced this, you know what I mean. And I might not be describing exactly how it works, but this is my hunch. So, like, if I drag down... Notice how the mouse cursor moves closer to Pandar Brunei. If I were to do an exaggerated, like, a quick enough motion, which is always what it is. It's like I'm never expecting it. I'm just trying to do something really fast. And then let go, and my mouse, because I'm dragging down, is over something that can be clicked. When I let go of the mouse button, it will click it. It will treat it as though I had pushed down on the mouse on that. And it's like, no, I didn't do that, Civ. Stop it. <laughs> it is a massive pet peeve of mine with this game because the game has done it for so long. Okay, good news. So this settler is going to be founded. We found the city of Thebes right on top of that rice. Because it's on top of the rice tile, this city, check this out, has a three food, one production hub. Remember in the first episode how I talked about that... You know, if you put a settler on top of Plains Hills, you get two production, two food, instead of two food, one production. Well, one of the other special cases is if you settle right on top of a rice tile, you get three food, one production. So you get a city that grows very fast, which when you're in a loyalty war with other civilizations and trying to take cities peacefully, uh, that can be an amazing, amazing thing, I must say. So let's go ahead and... It looks like this is a pretty good spot for a campus right now. And I'm going to go ahead and buy this spot, I think. 
All right, and now we have this settler. I'm gonna move that builder there. We're gonna chop that down in the next turn. I'm gonna move these units into my territory so that Gorgo doesn't get any funny ideas. Or doesn't think that I'm getting funny ideas, you know? Both. Both ideas are important. Oh, hi! I don't know, Montezuma. I don't know what I am in this game. I'm playing as the leader that I hate the most. It's an honor to meet you. We would love to sample your hospitality. Thank you. You're so nice. Can I send you a delegation? Nice. Can I send a monitor a delegation? Nice. Okay, so diplomatically things might be improving. I might be able to get some trading done. So we met a new civilization. All right, we've also discovered a new continent. And someone has built the Oracle. Meanwhile, I've built no wonders. <laughs> At all. It's great. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's totally normal. This is fine. I'm going to train... You know what? I'm going to wait. Because in just a bit... I don't have any other trader capacity, though. Damn. Okay. In that case, I will go ahead and buy a builder in Swinet. Because we need to. We need to support that city's growth as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to try and get this... Let's see, what would be... Alright, so there's turtles out there, so if I settle there, I have a lot of luxuries. I'm going to go ahead and give that order. It's a marsh tile. It's not great, but there's tundra, so there's wonders that I could potentially build that would be useful. So I'm going to try and get a settler up there, and I'm hoping Ngazargamu helps keep the area clear of barbarians. It's going to be a little dicey because I don't have a support unit with that particular settler. Terracotta Army and Lumber Mill research done. So... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say machinery. The game is recommending it, but also that's going to help me upgrade my skirmisher, upgrade my archers to crossbowmen, and have the it'll give me the ability to build the siege tower. Okay. I'm going to put that scout right there and not move them any farther. Ooh, we finally have the ability to build another district in Rocket Debt. Guess which one I'm going to build? Science, please? Holy crap. We're so far behind. It is a literal travesty. Okay. Uh, now at this point, how much housing do you have? We have six. I'm going to go for the water mill first. It has full loyalty. I would love the ability to get a trader going. Oh my god, you did not steal that tile from me. Yeah, I am so going to take cities from Gorgo. <laughs> At some point in the future of this game, especially if like things get away from me, which is entirely possible. If things get away from me and I'm not able to like mount a winning campaign here given how far behind that beginning put me. Uh I'm just going to take out all of my rage on Gorgo and call that a win, you know? That that would make me happy. And then we'll just do an in denial too at some point that will hopefully not have three angry civilizations greeting me. Hey, what do you know? I take it back. A monitor is being nice now. Why couldn't you have done that earlier? Your progress towards feudalism has advanced considerably. Nice. This is a lot of fun though. Don't get me wrong. I'm being snarky because I'm having fun with the meme. I actually enjoy this version of Cleo a lot, as I said in the first episode as well, so I'm really being quite facetious. Now, since you are so friendly to me now, um, oh, you're, you're, you're not willing to trade iron. Like, like, at all. At all. Okay, never mind. You're not my friend. I thought we could be buddies, Amonitor. But you don't want to trade iron, and iron is the thing I literally need more than anything else. Literally. How much does that tile cost? 65? I bet you Gorgo's going to go for that tile, too. 
if she takes that tile, I'm going to take Ephesus before I take Eritrea. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. Just you wait. Just you wait, Henry Higgins. Just you wait. That's an obscure reference. Okay. Akatatan grows and its people take pride in the thriving metropolitan life. Nice. Their progress towards civil service has advanced considerably. Now, I, for the love of God, yes, I need a shrine. I'm not even going to look at my other options in Akatatan. I have been putting off building a shrine there for so long, and I need the faith per turn. Period. All right, let's get this scout up on land, and then I need to get this scout off of my freaking meteor site, please and thanks. Wow, this... Holy crap, are you serious? Eritrea and Ephesus are both... Pesejet again. So Shadet's actual, like, it's only, I mean, you, you you can see the share right there. It's mostly still an Eye of Ra city. We're going to call it that. But we need to deal with this because especially if we want to conquer these with loyalty. Honestly, I keep talking about that, but the fact that she got a golden age when we got a heroic age pretty much nips my chances of taking these cities with loyalty pressure in the bud. I was, I, I will be open to seeing if I can do it, but it's just going to be so much harder to do it. So I I'm kind of doubtful that's in the cards at this point, to be completely frank. Okay, your knowledge of mass production has advanced considerably. All right, now if I build a Sphinx here, that's an additional culture point per turn. I can clear that marsh. <laughs> I love it. A very, very rich man, Mansa Musa. It is an honor to meet you. Exchanging information on our capitals is a great idea. It should help promote trade. All right, let's once again, let's send a delegation right away. You will accept. Okay. Do you have iron? <laughs> you do not. Damn. All right, I tried. All right, so finally we meet a civilization that's kind of more on par with us, like how we're doing at the moment, which makes me feel a little better about myself. Thank you. Um... Let's see what else we got. I don't want to skip these. All right, so, so far in this age, I mean, we have 17 to 31 turns left. We haven't achieved a lot. <laughs> we haven't we haven't discovered a lot. We haven't really done a lot. So I don't want to get another Dark Age. All right, the Temple of, Temple of Artemis has been built. I, I don't even really have a lot of opportunities to build exciting... I don't have a mountainous region where I could build an awesome campus and get a bunch of era score. Let others say what they will, but the real flourishing of, of, of medieval era culture began with the discovery of feudalism by Egypt. So there's an error score point. I'll take that. Vote that counts. In feudalism, it's your count that votes. <laughs> okay. Your knowledge of stirrups has advanced considerably. All right, let's go ahead and clear this marsh, which did help Swinnet grow. We are low on housing, unfortunately but we're now three turns away from finishing the harbor. Yay. I'm going to go ahead and put a lumber mill here too. I want Thebes to build as fast as it can. Are there... Let me take one more look at this. Because I'm not building any wonders right now. Newly trained builders gain two extra build actions. Ooh, you know what? Let's go with that for now. I like these policies as they are. It's keeping my gold income up, and it's allowing me to build my harbors and my encampments quickly. Not really working on my encampments at the moment, but you get my, you get my point. All right, we do have some iron here, so I could potentially settle a city over here, put it on this rice tile, and actually be okay. So this could be interesting here because this barbarian scout is not getting off of that tile and I'm kind of annoyed about it. 
let's get you over here. Again, we want to have triads of farms so that they can be more productive. Now, you are currently set to a production focus. If I put you on a food focus, does that really change much? Doesn't seem to change much because there's such a good balance in the tiles there right now, so that's good. Chidette is about to equal the size of Eritrea. All right, so we almost have this harbor completely explored. Temple of Artemis and Machu Picchu have been built. Wow. Wow. I just feel like this is... It is a lot of land that I kind of have to myself, and that's... Oh, shh. That's dangerous. It's a lot of land that I have to myself. Hang on. What can I do here? I really should have sent... I should have done this much sooner. I just... I was thinking that with all these units belonging to Ingazar Gam in Ingazar Gamu, I was not expecting there to be a barbarian scout up here still messing around, but apparently there is. You can never trust these city-states to keep everything clear. So... Damn. What would be the best way? I mean, literally the fastest way that I have at my disposal right now is to send this Mariano Chariot Archer over... Looks like over land. And it's going to take eight turns. And I'll have to kind of play chicken, and hopefully they'll kill the scout. I just need to make sure the scout doesn't take my settler. I'm glad I noticed that. Okay, so now I'm going to... Yeah, I'm just going to go all out. I'm going to build the granary, which will help Shadet grow even faster. I should be able to train another missionary soon in Rockadet, which will help me get religion reinstated here. I think Eritrea is the city I need to push for. As much as Ephesus is the one that has territory that I want, Eritrea is the smaller city. It's going to be the one that's a little bit... going to be a little bit easier to attack, I think. When it comes time for that... Okay, let's let's do one more turn. What's this? You're going to give me open borders. Gold for 30 turns. And you just want some horses. All right, tell you what. All right, so I, if you don't know what I just did, I just made the deal a little better for her, which she'll slightly interpret as a favorable trade deal. That I was nice to her, basically. Because she just wants 13 of my horses. And I have horses to sell. And if she wants to give me gold for 30 turns, then and give me open borders, which gives me intel on her, then I'll take it. I know that she could use those horses to attack me, but it's fine. Many dispute the actual start of, of the medieval era, but you know it was when Egypt discovered machinery. Remember that people break down too, not just machinery. Okay, so now we can train the skirmisher, which is an upgrade to the scout. We can train the crossbowman, the siege tower, and Kilwa Kilwanisi. Let's see, did that unit actually move? No, of course it didn't. Why would it actually do the thing that would be useful for me? How close to leveling up are you? 66 of 90. And you're just going to sit there, aren't you? just gonna sit there Ooh, interesting so that barbarian scout is now gone see this is interesting let me i'm gonna i'm gonna move one tile at a time because i'm nervous that the scout is right there on the tundra and if i move the settler here where the scout can see it which it might already be able to see it because of scout because of Scouts Plus. Ooh, that's dicey. At the very least, we might have to rescue that unit with our Mariano Chariot Archer. But that's why we have that unit on the way. And see, I'm going to send it through the water because every time its destination gets blocked by one of these wandering city-state units, its order gets canceled. I'm really glad I got that. All right, let's go through this turn really quick. All right, I can buy this. Oh, this is perfect, actually. 
that's going to be a commercial hub. So Akhetaten is shaping up to be a very, very productive, wealthy city. Much more central than Rakadet. And it looks like, yeah, yeah, Amanator is absolutely, hiccup, excuse me, absolutely going for the religious victory. Without question. Let me see if there's anything I can trade. Nothing at the moment. Yeah, I don't have doubles of any of my luxury resources yet. I will as soon as I have this settler done and dusted up here. But nothing at the moment. All right, let's go to the next turn and see what happens. Ah, delegation. Nice. So that's a gift of gold from Mansa Musa. And Thebes has been converted to Pesajet. That is not nice. Sailors and stevedores shout and sing shanties all along the bustling wharfs in the harbor of Swinet. Fantastic. All right. We're at the beginning of turn 94 and at the beginning of minute 36 in three seconds in this episode. So I'm going to stop this one here. And in the next one, we're going to continue keeping an eye on this guy here and seeing if we could go ahead and get that settler into an ideal position. Um without needing support from this Marianu Chariot Archer that is now only six turns away. Shadet is now at size four, which is good, and it's growing pretty fast. And as soon as I have another trade slot, I'm going to put a trader in there and get it growing even faster. I think that city will eventually serve its purpose as a bulwark, you know, and possibly as a place to launch attacks from. But things, because of that golden age difference that I've mentioned a couple times this episode, <laughs> what, five, six, seven, or eight times? Um, things have not gone as optimally as I would have hoped with the conversion of these cities or one of the cities because she somehow got a golden age even after I kicked her butt in that war which I suppose it wasn't really that sound of a defeat but she really tried hard to defeat me and I killed like so many of her units and she had to consume so many resources but she still pulled out a golden age because she must have just some really advantageous positioning uh, that's enabling her to have this advantage in science and culture. So we know who our enemy is for this game, and it looks like the only path to victory is literally through, literally through Gorgo. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. Oh, that's a really good stretch. New episodes are coming out every day at 10 a.m., U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.